Welcome to the Dave Nordahl Show. And uh, starting it off, I did want to talk about the Mary Sue article published the next day. And as we all know, oof, feminists have to do two things in two days. Whew. Man, her blue pussy hair must have been sweating like Niagara goddamn falls. So, uh, let me make sure my... Okay, my audio is set up for videos. Okay, um... Okay, this was the list they encouraged me to go look at um, as a list of dead lesbians on TV. And the only, or LGBTQ, whatever, and outside of... Um, Outside of literally Vito from The Sopranos, I couldn't find um any sort of any sort of like show that specifically killed off the lesbian characters. Most of these shows are not violent shows. Just not for nothing. I mean, ER. What Was there an episode in the hospital where a gunman was going around the hospital shooting all the gay doctors and nurses? Uh, Party of Five. Uh, I didn't watch that piece of shit show. But... It, it was a teen and family drama. Uh... Courthouse, what the fuck was that? Uh, 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 okay, a drama. Okay, murder one. If they had a gay person in there, well, unfortunately, it, somebody's got to die. Uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. There is, yeah, Willow fucked every girl in that goddamn thing, except the one chick we all wanted to see her fuck, and that was Buffy. <laughs> Oz. Oz is an incredibly dark show, okay? Dawson's Creek. I Was was there an episode of Dawson's Creek that I missed where, like, Dawson finally gets fed up and just starts mowing motherfuckers down? And also, of all these shows that are violent, like, like The Sopranos, how many straight guys died in The Sopranos? Like, Vito was the only gay dude. <laughs> uh, no, I take that back. T Tony dated a bi chick. I take that back. But I don't know if she died or not. She did get burned to shit. So, anyway. Uh, that, en that ends this one. Um, not the live stream, but I'm gonna go to the, uh, Mary Sue, uh, the showrunner clarifies Kate Kane won't die. Good. All the problems of the world are solved. In response to Justified Online fur over the... Was there really, or was it just from the Mary fucking Sue? Anyway, uh, Kate Kane would be killed off. Showrunner Caroline Dries has issued a statement assuring fans she is well aware of the dangerous trope that would be perpetuated by killing Kate Kane. The dangerous trope of killing a fictional character. This is the problem. You want, you want fucking representations, but the second I make the lesbian the victim of a murder, you people lose your shit. I have to make lesbian and gay characters more powerful than fucking Superman. As a lesbian who's been working as a writer for the fa past 15 years, good, then you can understand that fictional characters, um, they're not real. Doesn't matter. Kill them all. I'm well aware of the bury your gaze trope. Did your own list that you sent me didn't have any... Most of the shows were non-violent shows. I mean, Dynasty from the 80s, the only motherfucker that got shot in that was J.R. I have no interest in participating it, 
My comments about recasting Batwoman have launched a storm of rumors and misinformation. I wanted to clarify something. Like you, I love Kate Cage. She's the reason I wanted to do this show. We'll never erase her. Well, you don't have the actress. So either you're going to have to completely rework the show, or you're going to you're you're going to have to re or you're going to have to recast her. You only got two options, and that means your entire story arc from season one is now worth as much as a fucking Filipino hooker at low tide. In fact, her disappearance will be one of the mysteries of season two. Nobody will watch it! I mean, it went from, what, two point something million viewers to, God, what was it at the end? Like 600,000? It lost over two-thirds of its fucking audience. I don't want to give away any of our surprises, but to all our devoted fans, all five of them, please know that LGBTQ plus justice is at the fair... Oh, my God. What justice in any way do fictional characters produce? Oh, that's right. Nothing. They are fucking fictional characters characters. That is it. Okay? And again, you don't give a fuck if in a novel, somebody goes through and tortures 50 fucking straight white males because I guess they just fucking deserve it. Now, I don't give a shit because it's fiction. Who cares? These people are not real. I'm extremely relieved by this. Oh, my God. You mean you got off your goddamn symbion for five minutes? And hopefully that dries and company will find a way to honor Kate. Uh, yeah, sure. They're going to come out with a Batwoman dildo. And the world they have built. The world they have built is shit. This is the world they built. Okay, Kate Kane is a fucking sociopath who doesn't give a shit about upholding the law. She's also more powerful than Superman. Uh, her sister, Alice, she's supposed to be the fucking psychopath, but she's actually about the same level as Kate. The rest of the characters are completely forgettable, and yeah, her father, Jacob, should probably shoot her. Just to get me the fuck out of this show. Even though I actually haven't watched a single episode, and I'm not going to bother. Drys and her writers have repl have placed an immensely difficult position in the wake of Rose's departure. Uh, the reason I think Ruby Rose left is, I will have to say this, I didn't think she was this smart. I think she's seen this Titanic that this show was, and just said, fuck this, I'm out of here, I'm not sacrificing my career on this altar. Uh, I am glad they're aware of what a delicate situation they are in terms of wet with Tyson. Oh, God. I fucking... Oh, my God. I, I cringe every time I hear that word. And the tropes that often follow lesbians. Really, I, I looked at your little list you, you, you included in the first article. The only one that was explicitly said that he was killed was Vito from The Sopranos. A rather violent show. I hope we'll all be able to navigate their way through these unknown dangerous waters with tact and come out better on their other sides. It's a shitty show on probably the shittiest network on free TV. Nobody fucking cares about the CW. The CW could put dog shit the show on. And nobody care because nobody'd watch it. Hell, I'll bet you twenty bucks. CW could put hardcore porn on, and nobody would care because nobody'd be watching it. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Okay. I and, and what's worse is they're like, we're gonna make sure that a lesbian plays the new Batwoman. Why does why does who? the actress fucks at night relevant to whether or not she can play Batwoman. Why, why is that a thing? Okay, actors get, get paid to play pretend. 
when Neil Patrick Harris plays a straight man in a movie or a television show, I don't fucking care. Why do you people flip out if Matthew McConaughey plays a gay man? Who fucking cares? <sighs> anyway. Let's do a little bit of Young Turks. But I don't know which one to do. There's four of them. Uh, I'm going to do this one because this is probably the biggest one that will most likely sink Joe Biden. Hello, everyone. I'm coming directly to you for ask a quick favor. Will you add your name today? No. Amy Klobuchar has officially. No, Joe, I won't. I don't like you. Go to hell. Okay. Um. All right. Amy Klobuchar has officially taken herself out of the running as a potential VP pick for Biden, and she explained why during a recent interview on MSNBC. Let's watch this is a historic moment and America must seize on this moment. And I truly believe, uh, as I actually told the vice president last night uh, when I called him, uh, that I think this is a moment uh, to put a woman of color on that ticket. Can we just stop the of color crap? She's black, okay. You wanna, you want him to have a black woman as his VP pick, okay, fine. Who the fuck's he gonna get? Stacey Abrams? Nobody likes Stacey Abrams. Kamala Harris? Kamala Harris got, got destroyed by Tulsi Gabbard in 15 minutes. He could go for Tulsi Gabbard. She's a woman of color, last I checked, but then again, none of you people like her. Uh, Ilian Omar? Oh boy, that'll go over well. Uh, who the fuck uh, outside of so, like what? The mayor of Seattle? Or no, no, she's white. I take that back. The mayor of Atlanta? Oh yeah, that's going to go over well. I'm sorry, but if you box Joe Biden into this narrow path, he is fucked. He honestly, he shouldn't have said, I'm going to pick a woman. That was mistake number one. So, <sighs> honestly, I think if, if I had to guess, I think it's going to be Kamala Harris, which he's fucked. Uh, outside of a governor or a mayor that I'm not thinking of. The, the only other person of note is Stacey Abrams, and then he's really fucked. And keep in mind, while I do believe Obama would have won anyway, it would have been a closer race had John McCain not picked Sarah Palin. If he'd have picked somebody else, again, I still believe Obama would have won in the end, but I think it would have been a closer race. Just my opinion. I think Sarah Palin really hurt McCain. Like, really hurt. And there are so many incredibly qualified women. Um, but if you want to... Yeah, honestly, I mean, if it's Abrams, the debate's going to be hilarious. If it's Kamala Harris, the debate's going to be even better. Because, oh, police reform, police brutality. She kept motherfuckers in prison past their sentences. I, the And the debate is going to be hilarious because Trump is going to try to drive Joe Biden. I honestly think Trump's goal is to literally get Joe Biden to hit him. Literally to get Joe Biden to punch him in the fucking face. Heel. Ah, Durant Bastard. Jericho Green reference. Shout out to Jericho Green this nation right now, my party, yes, but our nation, uh, this is sure a, 
hell of a way to do it. Um, and that's just what I think after being through this in my state. So Jenk, uh, it, it, it appears that she is, you know, uh, well, I have my own theories on why she's doing this, which I'll get to in just a minute. But um, many are analyzing this as her. Um, she's a pandering idiot. She's a do nothing Democrat that is, quite frankly, probably terrified of reelection. Because remember, Hillary Clinton won this state by a cunt hair. We were a really close race. I think Trump's going to take Minnesota. Again, I could be wrong. I hate fucking trying to make election predictions. Even though I do it all the time. Um, In the 1984 election, uh, yes, it was that bad. Where you had Mondale, who had the chemistry or had the, had the charisma of a glass of water versus Ronald Reagan. Her opening the door for Kamala Harris to be chosen as the VP pick. Um, there are other black female politicians who um, I'm very admirable of, uh, including uh, Representative Barbara Lee. Uh, who? Just a consideration. I know that that's a long shot, but please look into her because she is a courageous representative who was the only one who was willing to speak out against the Iraq war invasion when no one else was willing to. Um, anyway, just. Okay. That was nearly 20 years ago. What has she done in the interim? Oh, that's right, nothing. Just my suggestion. Yeah, not just Iraq. Uh, Barbara Lee uh, voted. It was the only person in Congress to vote against that Afghan war in the House. Mm -hmm. And again, nearly 20 years ago, what has she done in the interim? This is the first time I'm hearing of Barbara Lee. Sorry, I'm not an expert in all 400 and whatever, however many fucking members there are of the goddamn represent House of Representatives. So, uh, and that took tremendous courage. So, um, oh, yes, it took tremendous courage to vote no to be the only vote so that CNN, MSNBC, Fox, what the fuck ever, jams their phone microphones into your face. She did that. I honestly think she did that to raise her political clout. She wasn't standing on principle. Yeah, she doesn't mean pick a black VP. She means pick Kamala Harris. Uh, so let's just be clear about a couple of things. Some people are wondering like, oh, is this like a great goodwill gesture by uh, Klobuchar uh, when she was still in contention? <laughs> the, the problem is, is that if, if Biden picks Kamala Harris, he loses the progressive, I don't know, 15% of the D Democrat vote. They'll just stay home. Trump will win the battleground states. Biden might pick off the popular vote, but the popular vote is meaningless. If he picks Stacey Abrams, he loses the center. And not only will Joe Biden lose the election, but he will lose the popular vote too. And keep in mind, we still have four months before the election, or four and a half, what the fuck ever. <laughs> Who would be that naive? Come, are you, come on, are you serious? So first of all, obviously she's bowing out because she has a 0% chance. Uh, George Floyd was killed in Minnesota. She was a prosecutor in Minnesota who ran on being tough on crime, which these days uh, we now know means tough on black people. She had uh, no, more white people were arrested in Minnesota probably year after year than black people. You act like white people, Jank, can just roll on into a store, take whatever they want, and walk out. But if a black man has a $5 bill that has so much as one little tiny tear in it, oh, they're just calling the cops on him. Jesus Christ, what Kool-Aid are you drinking? And no chance of being picked, none that's why she bowed out. It was smart politics because she knows that the media is going to not say that. 
they're going to say, well, you know, she had a reduced chance of winning, etc. But you know, a courageous move here, and really looking to help the African American community. No, no, no. She has a problem that when she runs later for national office or is considered for the cabinet, people are going to say, hey, wait a minute now. She she's not she was not strong on on black issues or minority issues. But now she's going to get to say, but wait, I said to pick a black VP. And so, and the press is going to go, oh, she said to pick a black VP. That's it. That's it. Amy Klobuchar, so good. It wipes away her record completely. Okay. And then there's a yeah. second point. You know, honestly, Jank, I really hope you do, you guys do take over the Democrat Party because it will become irrelevant then. You will lose by such a fucking landslide. This is why I hoped Bernie Sanders got the goddamn nomination. Because one reason. He would have gotten obliterated by Trump. Which is uh, kick Elizabeth Warren on her way out. Um, so Elizabeth Warren and, and Kamala Harris appear to be the top two contenders. Oh, TYT is an independent media. They've gotten millions and millions of dollars, tens of millions from. Al Jazeera, leftist rich investors, $25 million from YouTube. I mean, this company has had like $60 million pumped into it. It was worse than I knew. And they're still begging for money. It's like, Jesus Christ, what the fuck are you people spending your money on? How can you be this bad at business? Maybe this is why Cenk had hates Trump. Trump actually makes money. Maybe this is why he hates Steven Crowder, Dave Rubin, and Ben Shapiro. They're actually financially viable. Meanwhile, the Young Turks do nothing but beg, cry, complain for money. Meanwhile, your audience is the same fucking Antifa, blue-haired, asshole, dipshit, douchebag, activist fuckheads. They don't have that 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 are, that are sitting around the Chaz zone. They don't have jobs. Seriously, none of them work. They don't have any money. Elizabeth Warren, yes, is a progressive. I know a lot of you don't believe. I believe it or not, uh, rat bastard. Um, I it, it, that wouldn't shock me if TYT is somehow a laundering. Like the deep dark secret of TYT is they're laundering money, because I I don't know how the fuck this company. If you gave me a single twenty five million dollar investment, I could produce a channel and a network that would blow TYT out of the fucking water. They can't even light their damn show. My lighting is better, and I got three clamp lamps from fucking Home Depot. I could produce a show that would rival anything on network television. And I would use 125th of the money. No, I take that back. I, I would use two twenty-fifths of the money. The other the other one twenty-fifth would go to hiring staff. Who I would say, look, we're gonna do this for a living. You're gonna make 70 grand a year. Here's your contract, take it or leave it. If we grow and we we there's some money left over, maybe we'll have some bonuses. Boom. And I guarantee you, we'd have more videos than the Young Turks in about two years. Believe that, uh, but certainly way more progressive than anyone else being considered. I wish Barbara Lee was being considered. Uh, then uh, I would argue Barbara Lee is potentially more progressive. But uh, among the people that are in contention, Elizabeth Warren is the most left. And, so, and Klobuchar doesn't want anyone on the left. The establishment doesn't want anyone on the left. And that leads to, this is not just about Klobuchar. This is the establishment doing for the VP pick what they did for the presidential pick. So they all coalesced around Joe Biden and said, that's it, it's over, right? And now apparently the establishment is a little worried that Biden is actually seriously considering Elizabeth Warren. So now they're having the people like Klobuchar come out and go, uh, no, it's got to be a black VP pick. Oh, you want Barbara Lee? You want Nina Turner? Oh, no, 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 I didn't mean black. I, I mean, I meant black, but I didn't mean black. I meant the guy. Jesus Christ, my internet connection's better than his. We spend $10 on this show. 
But the what I want, who's totally pro-establishment, Kamala Harris, who by the way has oh an identical God, record as hello. me on crime. Uh, so uh, I'm not even gonna try. I don't to really care that. about the issue. I just want you to pick Pete a person that Katz, looks the right way Gates. but acts the wrong way. I don't know. So that's what this is all about. Do you now understand why I'm super skeptical about any any type of like shallow, hollow gesture that that Biden? I don't know. They'd have to be. I mean, look at them. They're not really. There's not a wide shot of them sitting at a goddamn sitting at a goddamn uh, desk. I mean, I would be. Especially if my co if if my co hosts on my show are all you know where my main audience is ten years younger than I am, and I'm the grand old man. Uh, yeah, I think they're still shooting at home because the problem is they they're really in a rock and a hard place. Everyone on the right and in the center said, "Wait a second, so rioting and looting, protesting, that's fine to break quarantine for." Because justice or something. But if you want to go to a Trump rally, or you want to go out to lunch, or you want to go out to see a movie, or you want to do blah 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 go to a theme park, well, then you're a piece of shit and you want to kill grandma. Oh, I take that back. If you want to go back to work, you're a piece of shit that wants to kill grandma. So they're really in a rock and a hard place. Honestly, they should have just all went back to work. Um, does in response to progressives. I don't believe him, I don't trust, and look, that doesn't mean, I get it, Trump needs, we need to get Trump out, okay? But what I'm trying to also say is that we need to be real, and the establishment is- I, you know, I, I don't see a scenario in where Trump loses. And the American people are not as stupid as you think they are. And the country is not as leftist as you are. Abolishing the police appalled abysmally. And now you leftist idiots are doing, trying to do that. Oh, and by the way, it's blowing up in your faces. Trump holds a rally today. He sells over a million tickets in like, what, 48 hours? Biden, if he were to do the same thing, couldn't fill a fucking bingo hall. You guys are in for going to be in for a worse shock. I, I don't see it. I think, I, I think what they see from the left is saying, hey, let these college LARPing kids take over six blocks of the city in the Chaz, Chud, Chippy, Chippendales, Chip, Chip, Chip of fucking Ruzone, whatever the fuck they're calling it now. And you have Trump saying, hey, I want to restore law and order. I want to bring your jobs back. I want to get this economy moving again. I want to basically make America great again. And we'll deal with the pandemic as it comes. Honestly, we should have never shut down in the first place. It did nothing to stop anything. My opinion. But I, I just look at the two messages of the two candidates. And as an American, I'm sorry, but Trump's message is the only one that I fucking resonate with. I don't resonate with Joe Biden's. If he even had a, if he gave me a message, you know, it's like Obama, his message, at least the first time around resonated with me. The second time around, I knew exactly when Mitt Romney lost the election. It was the third debate because Mitt Romney, not Romney said something incredibly stupid. He basically said, our Navy has fewer ships than before the civil war. And that's pathetic. And Obama looked at Mitt and like, yeah, Mitt, during the Civil War, we fought naval battles with cannons. You want to bring them back? Or, you know, he just humiliated him. Or wooden ships and cannons. And, you know, I, I, I was watching and I said, that's where he lost the election. He just lost it. I still voted for Romney. Not because I liked him. But because I didn't think Obama deserved another four years. I voted Obama the first time.
Now, truth be told, I did vote for Hillary Clinton, but not because I believed in her, but I really didn't give a shit about either of the candidates at the time. And a family member who hates Trump, who shall remain nameless, and the relation to me shall remain irrelevant, uh, offered me a case of beer. <laughs> Seriously, I, I, I promised them I'd vote for Clinton if they bought me a case of beer. That's how little I cared the last time around. Uh, anyway, let's get back into this. He's going to do what the establishment... And there's a reason why... And why the fuck are they still using Skype? Like, there's better alternatives that are free. It does. Uh, not this time, rat bastard. Uh, this time I'm voting for Trump, and you won't be able to buy my vote. It, it 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 comes cheap because I have to care so little. If I care at all, if there's like an inkling of giving a rat's ass about a candidate, you can't buy my vote. But if I don't give a fuck, like Tim Walls, I'm not voting for him. And hell, I'd support a movement. I I I I support the movement to uh, recall him. He needs to be recalled. He fucked this all up. Anyway, um, let's get back into this. Again, why are you using Skype? There's Google Hangouts. It's free. There's a, there's several other... Uh, God, what was that thing? S-Man and... Oh, God, the last time I debated the Conservatarian. Oh, I can't remember the site we were on. I'll have to, I'll have to look up uh, S-Man. Um, but use that. Why are they using Skype? And I think that your analysis is right. But I also would like uh, to send a message to Elizabeth Warren that when it comes to your theory of change, which is what turned me off personally to what she was trying to accomplish, you got to acknowledge. It was actually Budweiser. Budweiser bottles. <laughs> that moderates are not your friend. Centrists are not your friends. They're not going to work with you to accomplish things that you want to accomplish, the progressive uh, policy proposals you want to accomplish. I remember. Oh my God. And this is why you guys always lose fucking election. Without the centrist vote, you cannot win. Okay? I love how you seem to think there's this large swath of progressives throughout the country just waiting, just waiting. To be awakened to vote in your socialist bullshit utopia. Guess what, you dumb cum gargling whore? It doesn't exist. It doesn't fucking exist. You need the center to win an election. The center will not vote for a pro leftist progressive. End of story. You'll win little victories here, little victories there. But that's it. There is not this large swath of fucking America that is secretly progressive. Okay, most of the country is down the middle. If not slightly right-leaning. So whether you like it or not, that's the way it is. And honestly, maybe you should fucking change careers and go to uh, democratfacials.com. Remember there was a period. And I don't think that's a real site, but it should be period of time during the primaries where uh, Warren and Klobuchar got all like friendly with one another um, in attacking Bernie Sanders together. And I thought that it was pretty sick because Klobuchar doesn't care about progressive values or progressive policies. And she labeled herself progressive, by the way. Right. And I, I do want to give uh, Lawrence O'Donnell some credit because uh, her cr prosecutorial record did come up in the interview. Let's Okay, I have to go take a whiz. I'll be right back, guys. Um... No, not really. That same family member um, who I'm not going to name or their relationship to me, 
um, is going to vote for Trump this time. So, all right, let's keep going on with this. Hear how that part of the conversation went down. As you considered your own prospects in the last few weeks, did you have concerns about your own record as a prosecutor in Minneapolis and how that might be uh, dragged into the campaign uh, and into the possible uh, the, what, what, how you could find. And by the way, um, Biden would have been fucked if he picked her. Uh, Klobuchar is a senator from my state, and she's done exactly jack and shit since she's been in office. I have tried to vote this fucking cunt out every time she's been up. Function as a vice presidential candidate. Um, I think I could have functioned fine. And there's a lot of untruths out there about my record. Uh, and now is not the time to debate those. And some things that have been put out there on disreputable sites and passed through the internet. And uh, that's just what life is in politics. Uh, but I don't think we should be taking this moment to have those kind of political fights. So I'm glad that he asked that question because I really do think that her prosecutorial record weighed into her decision to take herself out of the running. And of course, she received a lot of justified criticism over the prosecution of Mayan Burrell, who is very likely an innocent person convicted for a crime he did not commit. Uh, there were so many flaws in his prosecution, in his conviction. And even though all those red flags were brought up to uh, Klobuchar over and over again, she was the prosecutor in the case, uh, she refused to do anything about it. And so, yeah, I mean, if I had that type of skeleton in my closet, I wouldn't want to have to deal with uh, the scrutiny if I were. Okay, Kamala Harris is even worse than that. Kamala Harris is way worse than that. If Biden picks her, then he's fucked. If we're going by that logic, Anna. A VP pick, and I think that that did weigh into her decision. Yeah, last two things here. Um, I think that uh, this might though prove ironically that Elizabeth Warren is being seriously considered. If she wasn't being seriously considered, the establishment wing wouldn't have to do a campaign against her. Uh, it would be assumed. Now at the end of the day, if he picks Warren, I don't know. I don't know what that does for the party. It doesn't help Biden, though. Because the thought is, with Biden, eventually the vice president is going to have to take over. Elizabeth Warren is not that much younger than Joe Biden. And she gets rattled when confronted in debates. 
Pence is going to cause her to have a meltdown. Okay. Oh, and by the way, Trump is calling for more debates. So, I don't know if she's a good pick either. Like, Biden is really in a rock and a hard place. He can't pick the the firebrand AOC because she's too young. I mean, Rashida Tlaib, Ilian Omar, they're out. Like, who the fuck did... He really boxed himself into a bad corner here. I mean, I'll give Bernie this. I hate the guy. I think he's a fucking socialist idiot that does nothing but leech off people. But at least he was smart enough not to box himself into this damn corner. Today, Biden will probably do what the establishment wants because that's who Biden is. Uh, but uh, but it is relevant that apparently it's a real contest. Well, if that's true, then I I think the establishment is just giving this election up. Just saying, fuck it, Trump's going to win. So, yeah, whatever, pick whoever you want. Uh, and uh, and then given that Klobuchar did this, and like I said, if it is a movement by the establishment wing, what you will see next, even though they are not in contention because Biden has said that he's picking a, a female vice president, Count down to Buttigieg and maybe even Bloomberg coming out and say, oh, we also agree that it should be a black VP pick. Because they both also have problems with race in their past. They're both the guys who also rallied around Biden to make sure it wasn't Bernie Sanders. So they would be logical people to come and try to make sure that there's no progressive anywhere near power. So whatever you or- Yeah, because generally if Biden were to pick a progressive female um guess what you'd be completely fucked in november pence would rip her apart and that would be that trump would landslide okay It's crazy when you notice it's crazy. Okay, this is the Young Turks. A message to corporate America. Performative activism is not enough. Yeah, we only had to destroy fucking syrup and rice. What do you want them to do? It's crazy when you notice, it's crazy the statements that many companies come out with and also the recognition mm -hmm. of things that they're short-sighted on always in the past. Suddenly they get it once it becomes popular or at least acceptable enough to get it. They mm -hmm. never didn't get it. Uh, no, it's with the rise of Twitter, these corporations are so stupid, they think that Twitter is real life. Why didn't anyone care about Aunt Jemima up until right now? Oh, that's right, because corporations are afraid of losing a nickel. If I was the head of Quaker, whatever, or PepsiCo, I'd be like, I don't fucking care. We're keeping Aunt Jemima. The goddamn brand's like 130 years old. Fuck you. And what are they going to re- and, 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 and what is it? Um, oh, God. Master P? He's bringing on Uncle P's syrup. He's going to see the void. They never were clueless to the plight of, of people within their company. They were never clueless to the fact that they had one black person in the entire building of a thousand people. They were never clueless to the fact that in the meeting they ignored certain folks. They never were clueless to the fact that they, when they point out, hey, there's no audience for that. Of course they know there's an audience for that. They just don't think it's going to be palatable enough. They don't want to mm -hmm. invest. Um, when they say there's no audience for that, it's like if I make a movie specifically aimed at trans people. Is there an audience for it? Yes. However, is there an audience large enough 
to make it profitable? Probably not. That's the problem. It's all about numbers. And by the way, this Aunt Jemima switch will really hurt them. Uncle Ben will be just as bad. Because pretty much from every centrist black YouTuber, and especially the right-wing ones, they're like, this is just fucking dumb. What the, uh, how the fuck does changing Aunt Jemima's name do for anything? Oh, that's right, nothing. The money in. It's too risky, because there's a gauge on our society as a country. I say this about Donald Trump all the time. Every time he does these extremely racist things, he's floating another test balloon to be like, is the country still as racist as I believe it is? Because it's working for me. Let me go ahead and see if they're as, as racist as I thought. Oh my God, the problem is, is that you think everything is fucking racist because you support, rem you support changing pancake syrup. And as they continue to, they'll continue to, to act accordingly. As the country begins to act differently, people have to, the companies, executives, Politicians have to start acting differently. And they didn't get into... Um, yeah, the country is not acting any differently. Hate to bring this up. It's really not. It's just the country is getting pissed off and scared. Your side saying the violence and the riots will continue unless you meet all of our insane demands and usher in our socialist utopia. Donald Trump says, I'm going to bring peace, security, jobs, capitalism, and everything that we like about America back. I, I just, I don't, again, who are you appealing to? I'm a centrist. I hate everything you've said so far. New playbook. They just start saying it. They always knew. They yep. just start like they knew Aunt Jemima was racist. They were oh, for on sure. Uh, they had changed it once before. Because we all have known these things. So as far as I'm concerned, you're absolutely right. They uh, what about all the black YouTubers that have pledged they're not going to buy unless it's Aunt Jemima and there's a black lady on there? No, what these idiots thought was something from Twitter. Everybody knows. Right. It's people want to get greater later. People, and again, I think what I've realized too is that if it's if it's going to affect their bottom line, you cannot. The positive here is that people are put on notice, and we are now in a space to where okay, fine. Something in terms of the bottom line, research has continually showed that having more diverse individuals among your ranks, whether it's gender, sexual identity, sexual. Oh, for Christ's sakes! But you canceled Aunt Jemima. You know. I don't know how far it's gone, but I think the Blagzit movement has grown. You guys are in for a real rude awakening. It might not be this election. It might be the next one. Or the next one. But I honestly think cancel culture is about ready to die. I, I truly do. Orientation, race. That can be a huge generator of increased revenue and income that will improve your body. I don't know if it'll become a shooting war reflect. Um, if it does, it'll be over very quickly. Bottom line. Yeah. So these companies have no excuse for not including us. Remember, uh, people at TYT don't like guns. The only reason they're not is because they don't want to give up that position at the top of the totem pole. This is not... Why should you have a position just because you happen to be a black woman? Why can't it be meritocratic? You know, a meritocracy. If you're good enough for the job, I'll give you the job. If you're not, go fuck yourself. You suck at this job. Why would I hire you for something better? Not about them losing money. This is about them losing societal power by giving us an opportunity to use our voice to have our seat at the table. Well, then why the fuck before this you had black CEOs, black lawyers, black representatives, both at state and federal, black senators, both state and federal, black governors, black mayors, bl a black president, 
black Supreme Court justices, seems like every single hall of power there possibly could be, you had black people there. Not white people. Well, you had white people too. And do you give a rat's ass about all the mom and pop businesses that black people burned to the ground that were owned and run by black people? Oh, that's right. You don't give a fuck. Because you three are idiots. And that is the problem. Adrian, um, you're right. You're right about, you are right about but everything you said, I, I echo 100%. And it's just like I said, a lot of these companies are being performative and are, they're realizing that if we don't, if we don't, engage in this we're going to look bad and you and back to what you were saying earlier the aunt jemima has been the most offensive thing uncle ben has been the most offensive thing. okay but it didn't become a problem up until right now really you were at the you were at the fucking super target super walmart grocery store where the fuck ever you buy it is you buy your goddamn food and you seen on Jem that bottle of aunt jemima and you were just like oh god no no, if it was on sale, 20 bucks says you put it in your cart and you just moved on. It's fucking syrup. How many of your black friends growing up when you had a sleepover, you woke up the next day, the, the mom or the dad, hopefully the dad was there, were making you boys pancakes. And what was the syrup? Decent chance it was either Mrs. Butterworth or Aunt Jemima, both of which apparently now are insensitive for some reason. This is why I'm proudly insensitive. I'm going to work to become more insensitive. Because I'm tired of this shit. Now you're going after condiments. What, are we going to have to change Heinz Ketchup? Because it has a German name. You know, uh, you didn't really give a shit about the barbecue sauce aisle. At least a third of the bottle, a, th a quarter to a third of the bottles in any store have a black guy on them. Isn't it a racist other than stereotype that black people means barbecue? Despite the fact that the woman that portrayed Aunt Jemima died, one of the first black millionaires in this country. She died a very wealthy woman. And had the Quaker company not changed the logo and the logo little bit on the little bit on the border there, but her family would have been getting royalties in perpetuity. So that would have helped a black family. So how about you shut the fuck up? Thing for decades, and all of a sudden in the last 72 hours, let's just remove it. It's, it's ridiculous. But because they're getting greater later, fine. We will take that. We will take that. But it, it's, it's, um, it's, it's... This Aunt Jemima shit is going to be the new Coke. Of this time. It's been 40 years. It's been 40 years since the new Coke debacle. Time for the great syrup debacle. Bullfrog in the chat says, I've never had I've never had any black guys on barbecue sauce. Really? You never had stubs or Rufus Teagues? Oh uh, God, I'm gonna fuck. Oh, I can't remember this. The other sauce with a a black dude on it. Uh, Casey Masterpiece barbecue sauce was promoted in commercials by a black guy for years. Uh, yeah, it it kind of happens, but they don't seem to give a shit about that. It, it bothers me because it's not coming from a place of authenticity. Really, it's not. Okay, then then fine. If we wanted to get rid of stereotypes, then black people should give up chicken. Because it's a stereotype that black people like chicken. Dave Chappelle made a great, wonderful joke out of that. Still hilarious to this day.
You gonna do that? You, you, you gonna eat cabbage and kale? Yeah, of course you are. You're a soy boy. And when you see all these like black boxes and all these people who they've known, and even in your work, even in your workspaces, when you've had conversations. By the way, give up ribs. That's another stereotypical food. More for me. Ribs are delicious. It's about blackness in your workspace. Give up mac and cheese. That's another one. You know, I, I'm reminded of this story. This was on the old War Corp 666 channel, so forgive me if I get this wrong. But there was a restaurant, I believe, in the South. In the, in the Southeast, excuse me. And they decided to do a Martin Luther King Day special. And it was fried chicken, cornbread, collard greens, mac and cheese, and I think baked beans. That was the meal. They got accused of racism. Had this idiot bothered to ask the restaurant. Now, if Dr. King was a, if it was common knowledge that, let's say, Dr. King was a vegetarian, then of course I would say, um, yeah, this is a uh, pretty racist fucking, you know, you fucked up. However, the restaurant did research. And according to two or three autobiographies, I forget which, Dr. Martin Luther King's favorite meal was fried chicken, collard greens, cornbread, mac and cheese, Baked beans. It's perfectly fine to do it in that instance. Okay. I I I I I don't get the goddamn problem. Who the fuck doesn't like fried chicken? Oh, that's right, no one. But if you want to get rid of racial stereotypes, uh, Young Turks employee, because I can't think of anything to fucking call you. Uh, why don't you give up fried chicken? Give up chicken entirely. And mac and cheese. And anything else you might enjoy. Places to people. And uh, they're like, oh, I don't know what to say. Or, or they don't even respond. Or, there's a, or emails go unanswered. It's just like, what are we seeing here? But all of a sudden now everyone's like, you know what? I, now I see you. And it's just... I, I'm worry of that. I'm worry of that. And I'm all for having the conversation like, okay, well, this has been a problem for forever. Tell me why. Or has been oh, for God's sakes, I have worked with black people that love the great drink fucking joke. One of them was even drinking a grape crush. <laughs> and he was making fun of himself been a problem for many, 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 many a month in certain instances in the workplace. Tell me why now you want to see me, why you want to help me understand. Yeah. Because the trauma, going back to that word, is the traumas that we've had to wonder why they- Oh, for Christ's sakes, I could take one look at you and know firsthand you haven't done any fucking trauma in your life. What, what traumas have you, have you gone through? Oh, what? Ancestral trauma? That's irrelevant. The traumas of the of the past? Irrelevant. What have you gone through, you fucking jackass? What, the trauma that happened to George Floyd? That had nothing to do with you. That was an incident probably a thousand miles away from you. What have you gone through? I'm sorry. Black people are not the Borg don't see us and that is traumatic we have we've had to wonder why i don't have the support i need we've had to wonder why there is a lack of this that sh then why have black entrepreneurs especially like damon john master p a host of others p diddy why have they carved multi-billion dollar business empires if the fucking country is so goddamn racist. Shows my, the, my, my people in these outfits, in these spaces, in, the, in these 
in these um on these platforms uh basically you want to be given special privileges to jump the ladder because you're black and you feel you're oppressed well it doesn't work that way bucky so i think explanations need to be had in regards to what's happening and people are like well, you, some, someone said you should be happy this is happening no no i should not be happy this is happening <laughs> I'm outraged and alarmed that this is happening. And I want reasons to why it's taken this long to have these conversations. Yeah. Uh, because, quite frankly, it's stupid. Um, any black person that doesn't share your worldview is outraged at getting rid of Aunt Jemima. A lot of black people said, wait a second, I liked Aunt Jemima. She was a nice, smiling black lady. This is why I think the left is headed for self-destruction. This is why I don't believe there's going to be a civil war. Okay? This is why I think... I, I honestly think there's a reason why... conservatism among the black community is rising. I just, I, I seriously do. And if, if the one poll I said, huge grain of salt, you know, take, take what I'm saying now is total bullshit. But the, the Rasmussen poll that shows Trump has 40% approval or 40% or, or of black voters are going to vote for him. If he has that, Democrats are fucked. Why wouldn't they be? The city's burned to the ground while their Democrat leaders did nothing. Nothing. In fact, pulled the police back. So, I, I don't know what, you, what in the fuck you're fighting for guys and we're you know like, we're yeah. owed that and it's not about being the bitchy gay black guy or the angry black woman or the <laughs> black man the bitchy gay black guy i've never heard that before it's just we deserve answers for what a syrup label a guy on a rice box you know, the Asians don't give a fuck about rice or roni. And I guarantee if I were to go on the street and ask people, do you actually give a shit about Aunt Jemima or Uncle Ben? Probably something close to about 90% of black people wouldn't give a fuck. Unless I stumbled into a college area. Right. Yeah, our, our, our ancestors, our even mothers and fathers, grandparents, and great grandparents, the things that they went through and experienced, I've thought about it so many times. Oh my God. Your parents didn't go through anything. Your grandparents, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. You're pretty light skinned, so I don't know when the fuck you came over. But if you want to talk about things in terms of slavery, well, we're talking about your great, great, great grandpa. I am fucking done with this. What? Let's just say your parents and grandparents went through hell. That affects you not at all, not in the least. Okay? What my parents went through doesn't affect me, not at all, not in the least. This is why I'm in the political minority on my with my siblings. Because my parents for, well, my mother was a, was a blue-hearted Democrat up until very recently. But my brother and sister, they're still bleeding our blue-heart heart Democrats. I'm not. I'm not conservative. But 
I don't blindly follow the Democrats. So no, your experiences are your own. Stop worrying about the experiences of fucking everyone else. Worry about you. Times about what would I have done? What yeah. would my reaction have been in 1960 in the middle of madness? What would I have done, me who I am right now? Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't know. It's impossible to know that because you wouldn't have survived in 1960 because you didn't have your smartphone dopamine hit. What would I have done then, considering all the brave people and what they did? Mm -hmm. They spoke for us, and they've gotten us to where we are now. It's time for also us to speak for them and be like, how come you guys screwed them over for so long then? Right. Because we're going to end this, and we're speaking for them. Many of them that aren't here anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're, you're ending fucking syrup branding. That'll end racism. That'll fucking do it. We finally got that goddamn Aunt Jemima. We finally got the bitch, that goddamn Aunt Jemima, and that motherfucker Uncle Ben. And suddenly everything will be awesome. Oh, God, shut the fuck up. All right, that ends this episode of the Dave Nordahl Show. I will see everyone later. Um, I guess just Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. You know what? I honestly want uh, the Aunt Jemima people to to do a new thing called uh, 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 either, either Auntie Abrams or Auntie Maxine. <laughs> <laughs> or Auntie Non-Gender Conforming Blue-Haired Fat Feminist land whale. And see how well fucking sales do. <laughs> oh, and what can we do? You know, and Uncle Ben will call him Uncle Soy. <laughs> and get the try guys to go in for a real close selfie. For Mrs. Butterworth, we'll, we'll label it off of Nita Sarkeesian or jelly rolls on her arms. Oh, <laughs> They'll support some syrup. <sighs> Look, I'm sorry, black assholes on the Young Turks. The majority of even black America doesn't agree with you. You're in for a reckoning in November. Actually, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let, let's, let's replace Uncle Ben with Uncle Donald. Put fucking Donald Trump's goddamn face on it. I think that Master P, motherfucker, he's already going to launch his own line of syrup. Called Uncle P's. Nobody cared. Again, Washington Redskins, 92% of Americans didn't give a shit. Lando Lakes had that Indian lady on there, or Native American, whatever the fuck. Did any of them care? Did any Cherokee actually give a shit? Oh, but the Twitter outrage mob came, and uh, yes, yes, we have to change the logo. The second you get CEOs like me in who have the balls to say, I don't fucking care if I lose your business because guess what? You don't. 2% of Twitter is active and Twitter is only something like 10% of the population. I don't care if I lose your business. I don't fucking care. Because a majority of Twitter is going to agree with me, and that means a majority of people will agree with me, and probably buy my product more. That's what happened with Chick-fil-A. Their sales went through the roof. So, anyway. That, uh, that wraps up this motherfucker. I'll see everyone later.